Hello and welcome to another episode of A Closer Look. Thank you for joining us. In commemorating the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps Day, or ANZAC Day, for this year, Prime Minister James Marape and his counterpart, the Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese, walked a 13-kilometre section of the Kokoda Trek to Isurava in Kokoda, Northern Province, where a dawn service was held on the 25th of April. A first-of-its-kind commemoration where both Prime Ministers from PNG and Australia walked alongside each other on the famous Kokoda Track. Prime Minister Albanese will be welcomed in traditional oral style in Isurava, about 8.3 kilometres from Port Mosby along the Kokoda Track. On the 22nd of April, Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese arrived in Port Moresby on the Royal Australian Air Force at the APEC terminal for the commemoration of Anzac Day on the 25th of April. On Tuesday 23rd of April, two days before the Anzac Day, Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese and Prime Minister James Marape flew into Kokoda via helicopter from Port Moresby with their delegates. Prime Minister Marape arrived earlier and hour later his counterpart Albanese arrived and both leaders were given a rousing traditional welcome by the Oro people. Then the Prime Ministers walked from Kokoda Airstrip to Kokoda Station. Northern Provincial Member Gary Jufa formally welcomed the Prime Ministers to Kokoda Station. <laughs> Anthony Albanese, the first Australian Prime Minister to walk the Kokoda Trail. I welcome you to our province. Thank you very much. In his remarks, the Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese shared the experience of World War II and stated that the relationship between PNG and Australia was forged during the 1942 war. It symbolises the fact that Australia and Papua New Guinea's future is together. Whether it be on defence issues, whether it be, as the Governor has said, in tackling climate change and the challenges of the 21st century, whether it be through our economic support, this is a relationship that is based upon the people-to-people -people relationships. They were forged during that period at the Kokoda Track. Prime Minister Marape acknowledged the visit by his counterpart and stressed that the Fuzzy Wazzy Angels play a significant role during the Second World War, which symbolizes peace and unity. As it was in the past when those soldiers, the Papua New Guinea helpers, the quarries, the archivists, people on both sides of this Owen Stanley range took to assist and walk side by side. They planted the seed of unity, togetherness, in sweat, tears and blood, as I said last night. And today, today what, you what you and me are doing, doing today, today symbolizes, symbolizes the joint step our two people, people takes as we now, now step, step into the future. The future. Thank you very Thank much for choosing, for choosing to be gracious, gracious with your time. time. Prime Minister Marape said that war will not bring peace and unity. Humanity, Humanity must, must walk side by side, side, side in togetherness. In togetherness. Hopefully, Hopefully our time, time together, together. should signal, signal to the world, the world lay, lay down bombs, bombs lay down arms, lay down fight. Find peace through peaceful means, carry each other. That is the message, hopefully, our step today can reinforce uh, in this moment of ANZAC reflection. The Prime Ministers visited the museum to glance through war history and then joined Northern Provincial Member Gary Jufa along with other members, public servants and security personnel for the tracking journey. On Tuesday, 23rd April, Prime Minister and PM Albanese commenced their two days' walk at the Kokoda Station. They overnight at the village along the Kokoda Track called Deniki. On the 24th, the walk continues to Isurava where they completed their walk roughly 13 kilometers. The Prime Ministers arrived at around 4 p.m. at Isurava. Upon their arrival, 
local and international media were present to capture their successful journey. The Prime Minister of PNG, James Marape, commended the courage of his fellow Prime Minister who took the hard way up to its rubber. Uh, he could have picked Chopper to lend him here. Uh, retired his obligation to pay respect to uh, the NJ event and then walked down and, through, and if he wanted to the easier sort of a, a leg of crocodile. But he chose to walk the hard way up and that's reflective of the inner, inner man in him, his commitment, dedication to the cause and uh, his overview in that Pacific as a family of nations should uh, maintain respect to the past, especially those who paved the way for our democracy to be what it is today. When sharing his experience of the walk, Anthony Albanese reflects on the important part the locals have played during World War II by assisting the soldiers through the rugged terrains of Kokoda. Uh, what we have done over the past couple of days is get uh, just a, a, a small insight uh, of uh, the courage and resilience that our, our soldiers and the Papuan soldiers and the people who provided them assistance, the local citizens, uh, did. It is quite extraordinary, uh, the achievement that they did to defend uh, this nation and to defend Australia. Both Prime Ministers and their delegates spent their second night at Usurava and participated in a dawn service on the Anzac Day on the 25th of April. During the dawn service, Anthony Albanese reflects on the soldiers who fought for freedom during World War II. Australian soldiers fought to hold back a relentless enemy. 625 Australians were killed on the Kokoda track. Of those, 99 fell in the Battle of Isarava and 111 more were wounded. And we remember and honour each of them this morning. After this break, we will take a look at Papua New Guinea's introduced advanced criminal data system. Welcome back to a closer look. Papua New Guinea's legal system has taken a significant step forward with the introduction of a high-tech criminal data entry system. Jomba Police Station in Medeng played a key role in launching this innovative project showcasing the nation's commitment to modernizing law and justice practices. The Integrated Criminal Case Management System Database, ICCSD, is more than just a technological marvel. It aligns strategically with legal guidelines and practices, marking it as the first of its kind in Oceania. This system offers a comprehensive solution, tracking criminal cases from arrest to court decisions and offender management. It's a game changer for law enforcement and judicial proceedings in the country. Despite challenges brought by the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic, Papua New Guinea's national and Supreme Courts preserved ensuring uninterrupted judicial services. They operated with essential staff, prioritizing urgent matters to maintain public trust in the justice system. The judiciary's commitment to quality justice is evident through investment in infrastructure and technology aiming for a top-notch e-based organizational model. The 2020 report of the judges reflects improved clearance rates and efforts to tackle pending cases, emphasizing proactive measures like appointing new judges and leveraging technology. The ICCSD not only streamlines case management, but also provides valuable insights for targeted interventions, enhancing the legal system's efficiency and accountability. Integrated Criminal Case Management Training System Database Manager, Kwara Giriwa, 
acknowledged challenges like electricity reliability but highlighted ongoing efforts to overcome them. Stakeholders across various legal and law enforcement agencies underwent specialized training to ensure optimal use of the ICCSD. The successful implementation of the ICCSD marks a significant achievement for Papua New Guinea's legal landscape, reflecting its dedication to using technology and innovation to strengthen law enforcement and ensure fair access to justice for everyone. Additionally, the National Judicial Staff Service has initiated its second integrated criminal case management training system database on the 22nd to the 26th of this month, transitioning data entry from paper to electronic formats. A recent workshop emphasized the importance of the rule of law and clarified roles and responsibilities within the legal and justice sectors, especially concerning the integrated criminal case database. Tony Killer, the National Justice Staff Change Manager, stressed the importance of updating data entry methods, while Frederick Kiriwom, the Deputy Public Solicitor, focused on handling serious crimes. Of indictable offenses, trial for summary. The criminal code provides the legal framework for defining and prosecuting criminal offenses. That's a nutshell what it, what it does. It encompasses a range of criminal offenses, including offenses against a person, offenses against property, offenses or rather sexual offenses offenses relating to public order or moral conduct. Apart from with your team to try and come up with you know, changes that you need or you feel that should be in place to make or achieve the bigger change that the, the country is going through. The senior leadership group is aligned to drive itself for the change. Without the top leaders, for instance, if the public solicitor sisters as a support ICCSD, it will never work. If the public prosecutor doesn't support the ICCSD, it will never work. So leadership plays a very important role here. When the leader talks about doing something or achieving something aligned to medium term, like you know, plans and government, you know, priorities, it's the leader who will make it happen. We will now take a quick break, and when we return, we will take a closer look at the recently launched 13th Festival of Pacific Arts and Culture. You're watching a closer look. The National Cultural Commission recently launched the 13th Festival of Pacific Arts and Culture, or FESPAC, to be hosted from the 6th to the 16th of June in Honolulu, Hawaii. This traveling festival is the world's largest celebration of indigenous Pacific Islanders, hosted every four years. In attendance was Tourism, Arts and Culture Minister E.C. Henry Leonard, Chairman of NCC Board and Chief Secretary to the Prime Minister's Office, Ivan Pomaleu, Governor for Central Province, Rufina Pita, amongst others. An event that serves as a reminder of common heritage that binds Papua New Guinea with the other Pacific nations, highlighting on the importance of preserving and celebrating its heritage at the Tetin Festpec is held high regard. Chairman Pomaleu explains details on the festive event. So, we are supporting the Tetin Festival of Pacific Arts and Culture. You're going to go to Hawaii and you're going to tell one little schoolboy in Hawaii that there's a place, there's a country called Papua New Guinea. And that's how they dance. Uh, uh, and that's how they look like. They, that's that's the, the, the demeanor of, of that culture. So it's an important event to, to support the Pacific the Festival of Pacific Arts and Culture uh, represents the, the commemoration of uh, indigenous Pacific cultures uniting over 2,500 performers and artists from 27 island nations and territories 
it has a history to it. It uh, was established in 1972. Its primary objectives being to counteract the concerning cultural dilution within Pacific communities. Minister E.C. Henry Leonard stressed on the importance of the festival and its contribution to achieving the government's medium-term development goals. Since 1972, delegations from 27 Pacific Island nations and territories have come together to share and exchange their cultures at at each festival of Pacific Arts and Culture. A delegation of 2,500 performers, artists, and cultural practitioners are expected, in addition to thousands of visitors from United States of America, Asia, Europe, and festival followers who, who see to it that they are part of the festival every four years. The 27 Pacific Island countries and territories expected at the festival are American Samoa, Australia, Cook Islands, East Islands, Federated States of Micronesia, Fiji Islands, France Polynesia, Guam, Hawaii, they're hosting the event this year, Kiribati, Marshall Islands, Nauru, New Caledonia, New Zealand, Niwi, Norfolk Islands, Northern Mariana Islands, Palau, Papua New Guinea, Pitcairn Islands, Samoa, Solomon Islands, Tokelau, Tonga, Tuvalu, Vanuatu, and Wallis and Futuna. This is an important platform that Papua New Guinea can harness the festival. Over the years, FESPEC has evolved in stature, becoming a highly anticipated event for both Pacific Islanders and visitors from around the world. It has preserved traditional arts and cultures, also serving as a platform for contemporary Pacific Island artists to express creativity and address contemporary issues. The launching alongside NCC's corporate dinner saw live music performances, traditional dances, raffle draws and prize giveaways and a check presentation all towards the fest back in June. National Cultural Commission Board. The VEFA Cultural Group has been selected to represent PNG Southern Region at the Tetin Festival of Pacific Arts and Culture. Governor Rufina Pita congratulated the group and presented a check of 133,000 kina towards their trip. Congratulations. The selection would have not come if you were not recognized for have done your part over the years as a cultural group. Obviously, you must have done something well for you to stand out, to be recognized and to be selected. Governor Peter encouraged the group to showcase PNG's diverse cultures to its fullest, encouraging and attracting many to visit the land of the unexpected. The governor thanked the minister and the Natural Cultural Commission for working hard towards such programs that continue to preserve and bring PNG's diverse and unique cultures to life. <laughs> Executive Director of NCC, Stephen Kilanda, explained that the 150 delegates were selected from many aspects of the society and culture. Mr. Kilanda stated that many complaints have been raised on the large numbers traveling to Hawaii for the first pack. He urged this is an important cause and the people should support it. People are complaining about numbers going to participate in Honolulu. Um, 
Vanuatu or wherever to represent the country to president of Kansa. That is wrong. I must challenge the people that what government is doing, we must support it. Mr. Kilanda thanked Prime Minister James Marape and the government for approving the delegation and assistance towards PNG taking part in the upcoming Fast Pack. That's all we have for you on this episode of A Closer Look. Join us same time next week for another episode. On behalf of the entire team, thank you for watching and have a pleasant evening.